Hello and welcome to my Astronomy Nights. I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at M81 Bode's Galaxy. Now Bode's Galaxy is a wonderful spiral galaxy in the constellation of Ursa Major and it's the larger companion to M82 making that wonderful pair of galaxies for observing. These are circumpolar, they're just about 20 degrees away from Polaris, so they're well above the horizon for northern latitudes throughout the year, but they're especially well placed in the winter when you have those long dark nights. So let's take a look and see how to track this one down. So to locate M81, if you're watching my last video on the Cigar Galaxy, I was saying how there's two ways to get there. You can draw a line from Gamma through Alpha Ursa Majoris and continue that line out the same distance of about 10 and a half degrees. And that will bring you to roughly the area of the two galaxies. If you have a good finder scope, then you should be able to see the two little marks of the, the center cores of each of them. There's another way then that I prefer to use and that's to go east from Dubé or Alpha Ursa Majoris and find a 23 Ursa Majoris and then go four degrees north of that and you'll see a little isosceles triangle about four degrees away and then come back again four degrees from that and you'll see 24 Ursa Majoris and then the Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy are just sitting just under two degrees away from that. I find it's easier to do this, especially when the skies aren't great or if you're setting up early, early on on this target, I find it's easier to follow that track around to get there. Now M81 was discovered in 1774 by Johann Bode and it was again independently discovered by Marchand and added into Messier's catalogue as Messier 81. This is a wonderful grand design spiral galaxy with two regular arms. Its real diameter is 90,000 light years, but it is tilted at 60 degrees to us, so you have that rugby ball shape. When you're observing it first, you'll notice that it's, it looks quite similar in size to M82, but you're just looking at that bright yellow nucleus, and the arms are quite faint compared to it. So if you take your time, you'll be able to tease them out, and you'll see them just extend to nearly half a degree on the long axis. So the M81 group is a physical grouping of about 30 or so galaxies and it's named after Bode's galaxy as it's the largest member. Now this is quite close, it's only 12 to 14 million light years from us, so it's spread out over the night sky as it's one of the closest galactic groups to us. Now I didn't look at everything because some of them are well outside the, the reach of my telescope. So I'll begin with the nearest galaxy to M81 and that was NGC 3077. This is a small little elliptical galaxy and it's at magnitude 9.9. .9. I found that it was very similar, it's quite bright and I found it looked very similar. It had that kind of cloud structure that um, the Crab Nebula M1 has. I found it was very similar looking in a wide field eyepiece to the Crab Nebula. Even though you know it's a galaxy, it's still, it had that kind of structure. Not, not a sharp edge, but it had a kind of a, a defined edge against the black background. Then the other galaxy that's nearby is NGC 2976. And this is a small little dwarf galaxy that's at magnitude 10.2. And it has a size of uh, 5.4 by 2.7 arc minutes. And it's, it's a little trickier to locate than NGC 3077. It sits about two degrees away from Bode's galaxy, but there's not a lot of bright stars to star hop to it. So again, my technique here is to use the curving of M81 and M82 to work my way around to finding it. Then a little further afield, you have NGC 2403 in Camelopardalis. This one is a magnitude 8.9 galaxy. It's quite large, but it's quite attenuated. It has a size of 21.9 by 12.3 arc minutes, but it's quite diffuse and the arm structure in it is quite diffuse, but you'll see the core uh, pretty easily. This one, you can spend a good while observing it and imaging it. It's quite interesting looking because it has that similar uh, angle and shape to um, M33, but on a smaller scale. The next galaxy then I went to observe was over in Draco, and I was looking to observe NGC 4236 for the first time. Now, when I was observing this, I forgot to mark down the size of this galaxy. So I was just going in blind, looking for it in the right uh, location, and it took a while to find it because I was quite surprised when I was, I was, I'm um, sure I was on the right location 
and realized that the galaxy was actually about the same size as the little Triangulum Galaxy 2403 and extremely attenuated. I thought it was going to be a much smaller galaxy shining brightly. So eventually I was able to tease it out and you can see that it's quite an elongated shape. It has that really long axis compared to the other one. I think it's, it's about 20 arc minutes by seven, I think, but the width looked uh, a little bit narrower because it has a really faint arm structure to the galaxy. But the best thing about it is when you're tracking it down, there is a curve of stars that kind of sits. It's like a letter P or a letter B or whichever orientation you find it in and the galaxy kind of sits within that curve. So if I didn't have that, I don't think I would have tracked this one down. So another thing to mention is the fact that M81 has its own satellite galaxy, similar to the way the Milky Way has the Magellanic Cloud. And this is known as Holberg 9, and it shows up in the photo. I hadn't noticed this before, but in researching the galaxy itself, I was able to find out that this little patch beside it is actually a satellite galaxy. So getting my data for M81, I was using my monochrome camera and I just ran luminance on the monochrome. I got a good night. I was able to run a few hours on it. And then I was using color data then for my GH5, which I ran on a, on a different night from it. And I was able to mix the two of them together. I haven't had a good run of clear sky to be able to run LRGB on it yet. So hopefully during the winter, when I get those long, long dark nights, I'll be able to run a full LRGB setup on it. At the moment, I've moved over to my 82 millimeter telescope because I want to upgrade my 200 PDS with a focuser and a few other bits that I picked up. So I'll be going on a wide field target for the next video, I think maybe Andromeda Galaxy or maybe one of the wider nebulae. And then I will come back again then onto the 200 PDS for maybe late November into December. This is a wonderful galaxy to image. It's quite tricky. It's uh, because it is so large and there's such a difference between that bright nucleus and those arms, it takes a little bit of while to work with. I think I can improve this when I get my more color data to go with it and to get to kind of even out the two levels between the arms and that bright yellow nucleus. But it is fascinating and you can pick up that satellite galaxy of Holberg 9 that sits nearby and it's that kind of little smattering of stars similar to the Magellanic clouds the way they orbit our galaxy so it's fascinating to kind of see something similar from this vantage point. So my observation sessions for M81 included M82. On my first night, I focused just on that pairing. And then on the second night, I was on the pairing and the other galaxies that are dotted around within the M81 group. For M81 itself, I was using my 12 inch Dobsonian and my 24 millimeter eyepiece primarily. I do have a 32 millimeter Panaview eyepiece that gives you a little bit more breathing space in the field of view, but I found the detail with the 24 mil was much, much nicer, much more pleasing. I was able to get that arm structure uh, easier with my averted vision on the 24 millimeter. It gives a magnification of about 62 uh, with that telescope setup. Uh, when you observe it first and you get them in your eyepiece, you're going to notice that M82 and M81 look the same size, but you're just looking at that bright yellow nucleus of M81. And it's not until you give it a little bit of time that you'll start to bring out those two thin regular arms that are with it. There is dust lanes involved, but I found there were more just absences of light than seeing the actual dust lanes. And you have that really light arm structure. It's quite large. It's like nearly half a degree on the long axis of that elliptical shape because it is tilted at 60 degrees and it kind of gives it a little bit more clumping towards the edges of the arms but they are tricky to see but you will get them if you have a good fast telescope. So for my observation session of M81, I was observing it alongside M82 initially on the first night and then again uh, when I was looking for the other members of the M81 group. I used my 24mm Explore Scientific eyepiece. It has an 82 degree field of view and it, it really suited the 12 inch, um, the 1500mm focal length Dobsonian because I was able to just tuck them inside that field of view and get some really nice detail on them. When I increased the magnification then with my 16mm, I was able to focus a little bit more on M81 itself and just tease out those two nice 
thin arms of the galaxy as you can see the dust lanes weren't really visible but it was more that the arms themselves just had those gaps in between them that you could see either side of the nucleus the nucleus is very bright but obviously your eye can see it much better than i could capture with camera and you can really kind of push the nucleus in and out of your vision and use your averted vision well on this one it's actually a good one to practice averted vision on because those arms are quite long in relation to the nucleus and they are quite faint so all in all, M81 is a fantastic target to observe an image. It's probably one of the finest spiral galaxies to observe an image, and it's definitely the finest pairing of galaxies in the night sky for northern observers, along with M82. It's really fascinating when you're observing the smaller members of that M81 group. On their own, they're just kind of a faint little fuzzy galaxy that you're observing, but when you put it together as a whole, as this huge galactic grouping that's sitting 12 million light years away from us and that's why it's spread out so much over the night sky it makes for a really interesting couple of nights observing if you get a chance to image or observe any of these galaxies do let me know in the comments and i look forward to hearing from you all thanks so much for watching and until next time clear skies